We're getting spoiled, Peter, by these primetime games. We're two for two with great Thursday night games. I hope we can keep it going. I see the Texans on the schedule for next week, so I'm going to be a little skeptical, but you never know. They're 1-0, and only team in their division that's 1-0, and so I'm going to cross my fingers and hope. Good morning. How are you? Hey, good morning, Mike. You know, I just was reminded last night watching that game to the bitter end. There's a reason why teams lose in the NFL. And it might be, you know, everybody can isolate, and, and I am too. It's an easy go to the week, Dexter Lawrence, uh, for jumping offside when uh, Washington misses the field goal from 48 yards. They get another shot, obviously. Dustin Hopkins puts it in clearly uh, from 43. But there are so many things that happen in that game. And I want to isolate just on one, if we can, just on one. And that is with two minutes and 16 seconds left in the fourth quarter, the Giants get a great interception. James Bradbury, as pretty and as smart and well-timed an interception as you will ever see. And so what happens after that? The Giants then take 16, one six seconds off the clock and they give Washington the ball back at the two minute warning with one timeout left, okay? And so I'm just left to say to myself, well, wait a second, wait a second. All you're doing is you're giving Washington the ball back and they need to go with an aggressive quarterback 15 yards, I'm sorry, 50 yards. That's all you need to do to get into great field goal position. And they got one timeout and two minutes left to do it. So to me, and now we're watching basically the drive where Daniel Jones threw it behind you know, his receiver, Sterling Shepard, I think. And so those are the kind of things. If you can't run the ball well against this great front, and you smash Saquon Barkley in the middle of the line twice, and then you throw the ball behind a receiver. That, to me, Mike, is what losing teams do. And there's a reason over the last four years that the team in the NFL was the, with the worst record is the New York Giants. And last night illustrated a lot of those reasons. Five straight years, 0-2 to start the season for the New York Giants. And I'm Going back to that moment where they did get the ball with 216 to play. Now, Washington acted like there was only two minutes left in the third quarter, not the fourth quarter when they got the ball, but that's a different issue altogether. I agree with you. They left too much time on the clock. I wonder if they were a little bit careful because of what had just happened. Washington throwing the interception. I don't know what you do differently in that spot. You know Washington has their timeouts. They're either going to use them on the final drive or they're going to use them now. They went ahead and used them after first and second down. They didn't have to use one after third down. It was going to bleed into the two-minute warning anyway if the clock was still moving. I just think you got to attack and get a first down. You got to understand it's not enough to essentially take three knees and kick a field goal. You have to get a first down there, Mike. And the reason that you do is because it's one thing to say, well, Washington's got a backup quarterback. We've seen enough now in his last two football games against Tampa and last night against the Giants to know that Taylor Heineke has a damn good chance of moving his team down the field with two minutes left and one timeout. And he did. That is what bothered me about this game. The fact that the Giants thought that, hey, listen, Let's just get the field goal, and then we'll play defense on them. There was way too much time left for them to play so passively on offense. You wonder if at some level, and in that moment, there isn't time for a whole lot of on-the-fly strategy, but he had just thrown an interception. Now, it was the only interception of the game. It was the only turnover for either team in the game. You wonder if he's going to be rattled by that, and maybe he won't be able to pull it together. We're willing to trust our defense in this spot to keep it from happening. Well, regardless, it failed. Their defense failed. If that was the strategy, the defense failed. I don't know what you trust more if you're the Giants, the offense or the defense. I don't know that I would trust either with the game on the line. But what's lost in the fact that the Giants ended up losing the game is they looked a heck of a lot better than they did on Sunday at home against the Broncos. The offensive line 
was not a glaring liability. They did better than anyone could have expected against the Washington front for the most part, except when they needed to gain some yardage with the game on the line. The defense wasn't horrendous, but the offense, I think, was better than the defense last night. So I'm with you. Trust your offense in that moment. You're given a gift. They gave it back. They didn't bust it open. You bust it open by getting a first down, bleeding as much of the clock as possible, trying to score a touchdown if you can, get a two-point conversion, go up by seven, and force them to drive the whole field with whatever time is remaining. I agree with you. They, they, had, they had house money at the end of the game. They had the chance to be aggressive, daring, and seize victory, and they all. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.